everyone. Welcome to our series of interviews marking the bicentenary of Gregor Mendel, the father of modern day genetics. I'm Astha Vatsan, a PhD student in Dr. Vinod Skarya's lab. Uh, we have with us today Dr. A. Vanya Rajan from Arvin Medical Research Foundation, Madurai. He's a leading name in the field of mitochondrial genetics and his research interests lie within decoding eye disorders. He has made major contributions in the diagnosis and prognosis of ocular tumors, particularly retinoblastoma. Uh, welcome, sir. It's a great pleasure to have Hello. you with us today. Hello, Asta. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so, sir, you made huge contributions to the field of eye health. Uh, could you be briefly describe what your current uh, areas of research interest are? Okay. So, currently we are working on uh, an yeah, eye tumor called retinoblastoma. So, it occurs in children from the birth to the age of 5 years. So, mostly it affects children, but rarely we do see adult entities with a phenomena called retinoma, so which is a benign form. And sometimes it can also turn into a fully blown tumor called retinoblastoma. So there are many gray areas in this field, which we are trying to address. The first thing we started is the diagnosis. So the diagnosis is was quite costlier and it still remains costlier elsewhere. So most of the times it has to be sent uh, abroad initially when we joined the lab. So that was a major challenge because about 90% of the patients harbor these RB1 mutations. So it is a clear genetic disorder which follows a Mendelian pattern. So we want to focus on the diagnosis of RB. So we have developed a strategy towards that. So first we have narrowed down the whatever the region that is highly mutated. So that was around eight exons in the RB1 gene. So those exons were first screened and the other deletions contribute to a considerable amount. So those were also uh, looked at it. So followed by various other uh, intronic and splice variants. So we have developed a strategy by which the cost has been cut down almost one sixth of the cost elsewhere. And also the time has been reduced to one fourth because it is very critical that the, the report has to be delivered on time for the clinician to take further actions. So that is one part. And the other part is the chemo resistance. So normally uh, a trade drug is given in Christian etoposide and paroplatin for this ca childhood cancer. But there are certain instances where they don't respond to this tumor. So about 30% of the patients does not respond to the tumor. So that remains a challenge for the clinician. So we are trying to understand that problem. So we have got some clues towards that and we have found out there are stem-like cells that remain present during their treatment and then they come back after the drug is removed. So that is one area. And currently we are also expanding to epigenetics because not all uh, factors can be completely explained by genetics. So we are also expanding our research into epigenetics of retinoblastoma. So sir, in all your uh, work so far, what do you think the role of Mendelian genetics has been? How has it helped you navigate through everything? Yeah, I, I think you would agree any genetics without, cannot sustain or survive without uh, understanding or following the Mendelian uh, genetics. So that was true in our case also. So the disease retinoblastoma by itself is inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. So whoever uh, there is a mutation, so it is passed on to the next generation. But in order to cause the disease, a second hit has to be happen in the uh, uh, specific tissue. In, in this case here, the retinal tissue. So this has been explained by Nutsen. So popularly known as the Nutsen's two hit hypothesis, which is the starting of any study on cancer, genetics of cancer. Yes. So ba based on that, what we look is we look both the somatic mutations as well as the germline mutations. So largely we get the tumors when the eye is enucleated 
but in all the cases we get the blood samples so it is essential to have the mendelian genetics clearly understood in order to uh, draw an algorithm for uh, uh, providing genetic counseling for the family right sir uh so so in science we clearly see the importance of mendelian genetics uh like you also described your work uh, heavily depends on it uh but what about uh let's say uh, the common man do you think the knowledge of genetics would help the common man as well true very much true uh because many a times uh all the patterns starting from the hair color everything is influenced by the mendelian genetics so as i mentioned uh, for retinoblastoma so we have several instances where we could see clearly the family histories so uh, this there is a 90% penetrance of this disease of which 10% is clearly inherited through the parents either one of the parent will be affected and the next generation will also be affected uh in rare cases uh, there will be a de novo uh, germline mutation also so the parents will be normal but because of having this de novo germline it will be passed on to the next generation so that accounts for 30% so this 40% uh, contributes to genetics which is which is passed on to the next generation now another 60% is sporadic so a clear understanding of the mendelian genetics is very much essential to for them to understand and also uh, to understand the inheritance pattern of the disease yes sir. so more and more people understand genetics understanding these disorders would become much easier for them yes um uh, sir so uh, your the nature of your work is largely translational it is directly something that helps patients can be taken to the clinic uh so uh, how do you think the knowledge of genetics would uh, help people in making uh, uh, policies for public health care how can how okay. can uh, this knowledge help people uh, particularly with respect to health care yeah so it is very much important to uh, implicate the knowledge whatever we have gained from science into the field so i will give you two examples uh, as the way i have cited so in one family uh the child has been brought at uh, around uh, two years so by then the disease was already advanced so the one eye has to be inoculated and the other eye we could preserve and with that he could uh, continue his studies and other things but still it's a pain but uh, when we did the genetics we found that the mother also had a similar thing but she was even not even aware of the rb so it's a uh, it's very much essential to create awareness and when we you know, informed the family the mother was pregnant again so we told that the developing fetus will also get a uh, high high chance to get retinoblastoma so they continued the pregnancy and the child was brought us within 12 days so immediately after delivery the child was brought that child as expected had rb but it is a group b which is a very early stage rb with the same mutation as seen the mother and the brother so that child could be could easily uh, salvage with the vision as well as the eye so uh, she has grown up now almost like 7 years we are following her there is no other uh, symptoms or no other signs of the cancer and it is well uh, well controlled with the early detection so it is essential to develop policies for the early detection mainly in the school level or even earlier than that so i would recommend the policies to be made to do the screening during the wellness visits normally during vaccination other things in the primary health care whenever the child is visits to the hospital so that time their routine eye checkup and the complete screening would help to identify this in early and we are also taken some steps towards that so we have uh, demonstrated a mobile app so that could detect the uh, signs of uh, retinoblastoma early so so that they can approach the hospital but uh, that is not full proof because there are some uh, many symptoms overlap with retinoblastoma but at least it is suggestive of rb so that they can go and check that up so we are following it that up and uh, policies are made and another thing is uh, for any genetic diseases so that has to be a complete epidemiological survey has to be done 
and uh, based on that uh, further measures can be designed by the government or any health agent and um, non governmental agency for developing the policy that's uh, that is actually very important uh, to include early testing because so many diseases particularly cancers uh, could have very different outcomes if they were detected early and then like you also mentioned a patient's eye can be saved other organs can be saved so maybe mm -hmm. uh, increased or better genomic surveillance could be a part of our policy um but sir how do we get to that stage uh, how do we where do we proceed from where we are to a place where genetics becomes uh, ubiquitous where um, more and more people know about it how do we move from here yeah for that what we do is by word of mouth it is passed on mainly we conduct the survivor camps regularly almost every 6 months or one year Uh, in the may second week is the world retinoblastoma awareness week so what we do we call all the parents and they pass on the message to their family and also the villages from where they come and similarly we also conduct many cma programs for the clinicians mm -hmm. so first uh, i would recommend the clinician also has to be made aware that because many a times it is fully occupied and uh, they are uh, very less time to look at it so Uh, it has to be very much taken care uh, at the primary level so that they can easily uh, look for uh, these changes uh, at the level and uh, further uh, that whatever the before school programs so there also we try to reach uh, so through that we can um, ask them to check any difference because the child cannot say the symptoms clearly as far as rb or any disease is concerned so the parents has to be made awareness uh, many a times how the patient has come us they take the photograph during their birth their first birth their second birth day they found this uh, design uh, that leukocoria because earlier cameras they used to have the uh, red eye so instead of red eye you will have white eye for this problem but now there is a lot of correction so we don't even find it so that is one thing uh, just any anybody can screen that and check with the uh, with the hospital and a regular eye check up every year so that would be suffice the, to identify any of this disease and also this can uh, be spread through um, many newspapers and other things it is possible to know the uh, there are at risk right so awareness is key spreading the message as yes. much as possible is essential right sir right. Sir, so uh, coming to my last question, uh, what advice would you give to people, uh, particularly the common man, who may not have a very good idea about genetics or genomics, but how how can they improve their health by the means of genetics? Where do they start? How what's the first step a person can take uh, to reach uh, a level of awareness with respect to genetic disorders? Where can okay. a person start? yeah so this again uh, as i mentioned that uh, a, a simple mobile app that can be is almost everyone has a mobile phone now so mm -hmm. they can start looking for uh, specific symptoms and many programs now can suggest up but it's, it's not uh, advisable to totally depend on the mobile app but with the recommendation of a doctor they can uh, look for the changes and other things based on that they can know whether that is genetic or not and other thing in south india or many parts of our india there is a consanguineous marriages are happening right. so it's good that uh, they aware of whatever the uh, things they are having so we generally ask the complete history before uh, starting any testing so similar way they can also look for uh, the families and whenever there is a, a gene pool with a high incidence of the particular disease so they can avoid getting married within the gene pool so that is one way we could avoid the diseases but that is not possible in all the uh, cases but so we suggest taking to the next level with the help of other uh, technological advances like uh, even though uh, there is a constant history now the prenatal testing is very much helpful so that can uh, no uh, clearly tell what is the risk that they can have and what is the uh, risk for the child and even if they found 
they can continue the pregnancy and feed them yearly otherwise if they don't want so they can go for a ivf based fertilization where uh, they can choose the embryo by pre implantation testing so there are many instances in uh, retinoblastoma papers published so where they uh, check the uh, embryos and then implant the uh, embryo without any mutation so that can grow into normal so this is one way a common man can know with the knowledge of genetics so they can eliminate the genetic disease or get rid of the, uh, any genetic disease well said sir uh, thank you so much for this very very informative talk sir i really hope the message reaches the common man and it really really will help uh, all of them thanks a lot sir yeah it's a great pleasure to participate in this program and i closely follow the guardian and uh, many other updates that you try to do for the public i congratulate the entire team thank you for the opportunity thank you so much sir